Your woman loves when you make strong eye contact and apply pressure. Your plane also loves when you apply pressure. Here's what pressure amplitude is and why it's very important. Let go! Boom! You're going to be asked to perform a lot of different calculations and understand a variety of different terms as a pilot. But pressure altitude is probably one of the most important terms and calculations that you definitely want to be familiar with. And there's one special reason for that. Remember this one most important thing about your aircraft. It will never perform based on where it is. It only performs based on where it think that it is. It's a lot like you and I. Your plane is connected to the human vibe, just like you and I, meaning that you could be having a bad day. You could be feeling down. You could be feeling in the dumps. But then all of a sudden, you get around your people. You get around your social circle, and they're high-energy kind of people, and they're ready to have fun. And then what does that do to you? That makes you want to have fun. Just because you've been placed in that environment, it makes you instantly perk up and want to have fun and want to have a good time. Your environment is everything. Your conditions is everything. Your plane is the exact same way. It's not going to perform based on where it is. It's going to perform based on the environment that it is in. And that's the most important thing that you want to understand and know about pressure altitude. A, this calculation of pressure altitude is going to be utilized throughout your entire flight plan from everything from takeoff and landing distances to your in cruise performance to everything you want to make sure it's performing off the pressure altitude and not the actual altitude. A, turn off the lights and light a candle. Boom, we back off in that thing because pressure altitude is all about your plane being a product of its environment. Just like we all are products of our environment as human beings, your plane is the exact same way. It's going to perform based on where it think that it is in the environment that it's in, not where it actually is. So you always want to make sure you understand that and that'll help you simply understand how to calculate pressure altitude. When you think about pressure altitude, just think about our entire atmosphere and all the air molecules that we got floating around up in that thing, dot, 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 dot. And as we got those things floating around, we know that gravity is pulling down on a lot of those air molecules. And those are gonna be the ones down at the bottom, at the lower levels. So everything's a lot more thicker and dense there while it's thinner as you go up. So we need to talk about, of course, what is standard pressure in terms of at sea level, 299 or two. You're gonna learn that, you're gonna understand that, that's gonna be drilled into your head. So at sea level, of course, your standard pressure is 299 or two. Then everything else kind of goes based on that. For example, for every thousand feet you go up from that 299 2, you're going to lose a thousand of mercury. So it's going to go from 299 2 to 2892 to 2792 to 2692, so on and so forth. And then at sea level, where it's 299 2, if we were to just drill a hole in the ocean and measure those air molecules, the number would be going up 3092, 3192, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So understanding. The baseline of where you are when you think about standard, what's the baseline? That's that 299 or two that's gonna be drilled into your head. And then from there, you're either gonna go up or you're gonna go down. And if you were to go up every thousand feet, you're gonna lose that inch of mercury. And then from every thousand feet that you go down below sea level from that standard pressure, you're gonna gain an inch of mercury. So as long as you understand the scale and how it works relative to what standard pressure is, that 299 or two, and how scale is calibrated here, it can help you calibrate your pressure altitude. So understand that first, the basics, and then now, let go, boom! So whenever you check the weather before any flight, you're being given a variety of different numbers. Everything from what the winds are doing to the dew point, to the temperature, and one of those numbers you're giving is the altimeter setting. And then based on that altimeter setting, you usually go to your altimeter and you usually turn the knob to put it on the appropriate setting. Stop and pause right there the next time you do that and understand what it actually does to the altimeter. Say for instance, if you're at a field elevation in your airport and you're taking off at a field elevation of about a thousand feet and you change that altimeter setting to whatever they tell you the setting currently is, what does it do? Does it bring that altimeter more to a thousand feet? Maybe it was tracking below that at first and then it all of a sudden went to that. Why would it do that? Because that's the current altimeter setting is exactly what pressure system is in the environment currently right now and it's, make, it's calibrating it and making things level and even for the environment that you're in. So pay attention to not just turning that knob to the appropriate setting saying, oh, I got it, I can move on to the next thing. Understand what it actually does to the altimeter. 
And that's why you want to understand that because when you get ready to calculate pressure altitude, you understand why you're calculating and what it's actually doing to the altimeter setting. Hey, so let's just say they give you an altimeter setting of 28.72, okay? So let's say how you can calculate pressure altitude once you have that piece of information. So they gave you an altimeter setting of 28.72. You know for a fact that standard pressure is 2992. That's a number that's going to be drilled into your head that you're going to study and know backwards and forward, 2992. So if you want to calculate pressure altitude and you've been given an altimeter setting of 2872, how would you go about doing that? Very simple. You would just take the standard pressure, 2992, subtract 28.72, and you're going to get a number like 1.2. Multiply that times a thousand, and that's going to give you exactly what you're looking for there, 1,200. So that 1,200, you're not quite there to get your pressure altitude just yet, but you can use that calculation to calculate the pressure altitude. So now that you have that 1,200, let's just say you're taking off at the field elevation of where you, of your takeoff of your airport is 10,050, and you're going to add that 1,200 that you got to that. Now, all of a sudden, your plane is going to be taking off and feeling like it's at 2250 pressure altitude. See how big of a difference that is and why you really need to understand the importance of pressure altitude. You went, your plane is actually at 1,000 feet or 1,050, but it's going to take off and feel as if it's at 2250. That's a significant difference. And all of your planning in terms of your takeoff, landing, and distances need to be calculated off at 2250, not 1050. That's why pressure altitude is very important. It kind of adjusts everything for non-standard pressure. And everything you do, more than likely, is going to be non-standard pressure. It's rarely ever are you going to get an altimeter setting of 2992. It's usually a little bit higher, a little bit lower. So it's going to be some calculation. Sometimes it may not be as drastic as a thousand feet or above exactly where you were. It may only be 500 feet. It may only be a couple hundred feet, but it's going to be some sort of adjustment. And you want to make sure you calculate and make those necessary adjustments because when it is drastic like that, then you can go about planning your flight better and don't get caught up in only planning everything for 1050 when you really feel your plane is going to act as if and perform as if it's at 2250. Boom! Now you got to use a very similar calculation to do the exact same thing for your cruising altitude and understand exactly what that's going to be en route. Let's just say for this flight plan, you want to be at 5,500 feet. You want to be 5,500 bands up in the sky, floating that thing, enjoying life, baby. But hey, now you got to add that 1,200 on top of that 5,500, which is gonna bring you more to like 6,700 for a pressure altitude. That's where the plane is gonna feel as if it is instead of feeling as if it's at 5,500. So that's why you wanna be aware of that pressure altitude to make sure you understand how your plane is gonna perform. So when you're calculating all of those performance metrics and understanding how it's gonna flow, base it off of the pressure altitude, not what the altitude really is because your plane never performs where it really is, it performs where it think that it is. Boom, now that you understand how to calculate pressure altitude, let's talk about a few more reasons why it is so important for you. Let's just say you were leaving your home airport and there was a pressure system there where they gave you an altimeter setting of 30.52, okay? But then of course you were going into an area and flying en route to an airport where their altimeter setting currently there was only 28.52. So you're going from this high situation to this low situation. And if you don't change your altimeter setting or en route and along the way, you can actually be thinking you're flying at the same altitude. Oh, I'm, going, I'm cruising along at 5,500, I'm good. But you haven't changed your altimeter setting as you're going through the different airspaces and as you're getting closer into a different system and you can actually be descending. You can be going from a high to a low and descending and not even know it. You think you're at the same altitude all because you never changed your altimeter setting. So your altimeter, was, you were just reading off exactly where it's been. That's why it's always to be constantly changing your altimeter setting. What you're gonna constantly learn about a lot of the instruments in your aircraft is you have to constantly check them and update them. For example, your heading indicator you know it has a tendency to drift off. So you have to constantly check it every 10 to 15 minutes and put it back based on what your compass is doing. That's perfectly fine. Similar kind of situation here with this altimeter setting. And you're gonna to have to constantly check that 
based on the estimate of settings that you're given. A lot of this is going to happen naturally in flow, particularly if you get a flight following. As you change and go through various different airspaces, they're going to give you their altimeter setting. They may just tell you current altimeter setting 30.52, current altimeter setting 29.9 or two. Whatever it may be, they may give it to you straight right then. But if you go long patches and long stretches in flight and you're not getting it, you can always check in on the nearest ASOS, AWOS, whatever you got going on to get the latest weather update in the current environment to make sure you're constantly updating and changing it. Boom! So if you haven't had an altimeter setting in a while and long stretches in flight, make sure you're constantly checking in yourself and you being proactive about it so you stay on top of that and make sure you're not gradually descending and don't even know it. And it can work the flip way in reverse. If you're starting off at a very low system and going to a very high system, you can be ascending again and not even know it, not even realize it simply because you haven't changed your altimeter. So those aren't just random updates and numbers that they're giving you that don't really mean a whole lot. They mean a lot because your aircraft is going to perform based on where it think that it is, not where it actually is in the sky. So always understand that and always make sure you utilize pressure altitude when calculating your flight plan. A boom! A fun game that you can play is that every time that you're given an altimeter setting, you can immediately start to think, does this plane think that I'm higher or lower versus where I actually am? And the way you can do that is by understanding the scale that we just reviewed. So you understand exactly where standard pressure is. It's 29.9 or two. That number is going to be drilled inside your head. So if you're given a number that says, oh, the altimeter setting currently right now is 30.52. In relation to that 2992, you know that the plane thinks that it's lower than where you actually are. If you said something opposite, they say that their altimeter setting is 28.52. You understand that the plane thinks that it's higher than where it actually is. So start to think about where their altimeter setting is in relation to standard pressure. Every time you're being given a number, where does this relate to 2992? And that give you kind of an idea of where this plane thinks that it is versus where you actually are. Don't forget to like this video, comment on this video, share this video, and subscribe to this channel. I am Donovan Batiste. Hey, this is Leadership Mindset, a place where you can come for free, fun videos about everything that you need to know for you to become a pilot. Because I want you to feel what pilots all over the world feel when we swing in and bang in that thing one time. Love you one time. Subscribe to this channel.